where there are just three games to go in Division 2 or three rounds to go, and certainly the top four, it's been sealed for quite some time, but the top two sides now look like they've just about secured the double chance. Whittlesey certainly has, and the Fitzroy Stars, well, they had a, a whopping win against the South Marine Football Club on the weekend. They were, I guess, done a favour by Whittlesey as well, with North going down by a, a more than reasonable margin, and you'd have to think from here that, that the Fitzroy Stars are going to get their, their highest finish in a home away season since joining the NFL. Yeah, I think so. It looks like a Whittlesey Fitzroy Stars second semi-final. We'll see it in the final series. Very disappointing here for North Heidelberg, though. I think it was a big build-up to this game. The go-down the way they did was really poor. Also, a good win just by Diamond Creek over Moondar. Well, it was a big win for them to have, wasn't it? They were made to fight for it the whole way through by, by the Murder Footy Club. A good test probably going into that final month of the year as well, but as good sides do, they were, they were challenged and they were able to respond. The Fitzroy Stars, what a massive victory in the end. 194-39 against South Morang. Nine scoring shots to 54. So it's about as one-sided, unfortunately, as we've seen it all year. It resigns South Morang to the fact that they'll go down and play Division Three football next year. But the Stars, you mentioned they're probably going to play now. We'll see that second semi-final, I'm sure they go in full of confidence in that game there, having beat, beaten Whittlesey in their most recent encounter. We start to, uh, this week's preview by taking a look at North Heidelberg versus Hurst Bridge. Two sides reeling after disappointing losses at the weekend for North Heidelberg. Well, they made something of the game in the second half, but it was really game over at quarter time when they kicked with a really good breeze and was somehow three goals to zero down. Uh, it didn't get much better in the second. They were down by more than nine goals at or 63 points, more than 10 goals at half time, and they were never going to recover from there. A really disappointing day, and, and for Hurst Bridge, well, most would have expected them to beat Laylor, but they didn't get the job done, losing by two points. Yeah, it's disappointing by Hurst Bridge, particularly how they've played all season. They really have played some pretty good footy, but to go down by two points against Laylor, very disappointing. I don't think it's going to get any better this week. As for North Heidelberg, I really found that's probably one of their worst games of the year, really, despite Shane Harvey kicking three goals. It's the 100th in that second quarter, which was. A lot of people would say it was a point, and I probably agree with it, but I'm sure he's kicked a lot of goals that have been awarded points as well. So good on you, Shane, kicking your 100th goal. As for, um, as for the tip itself, I'm going to be going with North Heidelberg to win. I'll uh, agree with you there. It did uh, raise my eyebrows, has to be said. I think um, it did fade late, and it was conjecture whether it had gone through the big sticks. He did kick uh, a ripping goal, though, in the third that probably deserved to be his 100th. That, that volley out of mid-air when he soccered the ball in front of it, Ran off, bumped out uh, Scott McAuliffe and, and then uh, volleyed one through from the edge of the goal square. That was probably more fitting of being his 100th goal. But uh, yeah, it was really lacklustre showing by North and, and never truly in, in conditions which I felt would, would probably suit them. Uh, I mean, Harvey, we you know he's, he's an absolute gun. I think last week we made a prediction of who get closer, how long it would take him in the game. And, and I said five minutes, you said I think about seven minutes into the game. And, and when they kick with that heavy breeze, it probably felt he'd kick it in the first couple of minutes, but it just didn't go their way. And it, and it took until midway through that second term for, for Harvey to get his 100th. And for Hurst Bridge, well, opportunity missed because they're on five wins at the moment. Their best result since coming back into Division Two was five wins in 2011. And, and you would have fancied him to make it win number six against Laylor. It's a tough run home now, and the points are causing upset somewhere along the lines to get that six win. And, we know they played well against North last time around, but North has plenty to play for after after a disappointing loss, so I'm going to stick with the Doggies as well. Diamond Creek and the Fitzroy Stars is the next game we take a look at. This one at Coventry Oval, and again, plenty at stake for these two sides. Currently six points separating the two between second and third place on the table, so a Diamond Creek win, well, it certainly gives them hope of, of finishing inside the top two come season's end and bridge the gap to just two points. On the contrary, I actually fancy the Fitzroy Stars to win this one. They've beaten Diamond Creek by pretty good margins in, in the opening two games of the season, and I think they'll make it three wins on the trot against the Creekers, which would open up a 10 point differential and, and would surely hand them a double chance in September. Yeah, I don't actually give uh, Diamond Creek any chance to beat Fitzroy Stars. Just going on their form, like I said, they've had some big losses against Fitzroy Stars, North Heidelberg, and Whittlesey. They only just got over the line against Moonda. Just goes to show that I don't think they're really in the best form at the moment, so Fitzroy Stars. Uh, I think we'll get a good win. Yeah, well, for, for Diamond Creek, just the fluctuations in, in team changes every week has been, been, I guess, very interesting. They've had a number of, of changes throughout the week. Last week, Andrew Owen wasn't there. Uh, we know Tyron Loder was uh, serving a, a one-game suspension, but they had so many players coming in there that side in the past three or four weeks, so it's hard to get any continuity there. The Fitzroy Stars, they're just amassing huge scores on their home, home ground. I know this one's away from home, but they registered a score of around, I think it was 180 points against Diamond Creek. Again at the weekend, 194 in South Morang, and they're uh, no doubt about it. They're the most attacking side in the competition, and Coventry Oval, I think, uh, it might uh, 
Well, Donald Creeks and I hope it's not a shootout because I think Fitzroy Stars got far too much firepower and, and John Hayes kicked six and, and Big Welsh kicked uh, five on the weekend as well. So they've got uh, they've got the kicking boots on. Game number three of the round sees South Bank take on Middlesea. It's the bottom player side against the top player side and I think it's safe to say that, that Middlesea will uh, be the, the hot fa- fancy to win this one by a pretty big margin. I think so as well. And just going on Middlesea last Saturday, I think... A lot of people, it was, it was a big game for them because they needed to get over North Heidelberg, needed to win well. They lost against Fitzroy Stars by 22 points week before, and had they lost to North Heidelberg, I think there would have been some questions raised about what we'll see this season, but it was a great win. As for uh, South Morang, obviously a huge loss, it was 100 and 56 points or something like that it was in the end. I'm going to be going with see to have recorded another big win against them. The, I guess the, the positive for Whittlesea, they've lost two games this year, and both times they've lost, they've responded in resounding, fa- resounding fashion the next week. They... Last time they lost, they took on Diamond Creek in the top of the table clash, won that game easily, and it was all on the back of a, a stellar first half. Again at the weekend, the, the identical, wasn't it? They needed a big first quarter kicking with their, I guess, against that, that strong breeze, and to kick three goals to zero in those conditions was an absolutely sensational feat. And, and for mine, that first quarter was what set up the win. It wasn't so much about the second where they kicked eight, because it really was a breeze, which was probably... You know, gave you a four or five goal advantage, so they've come back and they've bounced back. It was their leaders who, who led the way, Roy Dyson, uh, also Garrett Heenan, and, and Andrew Fairchild kicked four, four goals five. He probably should have kicked seven or eight by, by game's end. Uh, the final game of the round pits Laylor against Myrna. The sides have played twice this year, two more than competitive games. Ledger is squared at one win apiece. Uh, Laylor's showing some, some decent form towards the end of the year. They've had uh, a couple of wins, but now certainly secured their place in Division 2 next year. The win at the, uh, the weekend against Hurstbridge was a good one, winning by two points. Mundo had a uh, more than competitive loss to Diamond Creek, but it was some bad news. It looks like Rowan, uh, skipper Rowan Davies has hurt himself and, and may not uh, make it up for, for this game and, and potentially not for the remainder of the season as well. So that's a big blow, and you have to give Laylor some chance in this one. I'm sticking with Mundo, but I expect it to be a game that's decided by less than 10 points. Yeah, I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to go with Laylor. Remember the first time they played, it was uh, Mundo by 25 points. I believe Laylor won the second time round, correct me if I'm wrong Less than a goal it was. Yeah, it was a close one. I'm going to go with Laylor actually winning. You mentioned Rowan Davies not going to play possibly, so I think it's going to be a big loss for him. So I'm going to be sticking with uh, Laylor. It's a big game, that one being played at, uh, at Sydney Crescent later, so make sure you get out for that one. We'll go to a quick break. When we come back, we'll look, have a look at Division 3, where there is, again, a full complement of games this weekend.